to restart the video there was some IT there was some initial teething problems and difficulties hallelujah but we're back on again God bless you for joining me and as we were we were celebrating the name of our Lord Jesus continue to ascribe the great, great um, glory to him regardless of um, Regardless of the fact you may have used that expression before, still indulge your vocabulary tonight. I just want you to praise God. Give Him glory, give Him praise. He's the Jehovah El Chuel, the God who gave you birth. He permitted you to be brought into the world. He's the Jehovah El Elyon, the Most High God. God bless you, Antonia, for sharing. Antonia, for being the first to share that spirit of poverty. You are anointed as first to receive your deliverance tonight. As you were the first to share, Antonia received the mantle of the first to be delivered tonight. Celebrate the King of Kings. Celebrate the Lord, our hiding place, our high tower, our refuge, our stronghold. Jehovah is Jehovah El Roy. He has eyes that can see. He can see far. He can see near. He has far sight, insight, deep sight. He's El Shaddai, the God Almighty. He's El Nasa, the forgiving God. He's Jehovah Elohim, God. Elohim Bashamayin, the God in heaven. He's the Elohim is Kab, God my defense. Ah, uh, Obi, how are you, my darling? Congratulations. Your beautiful son has now entered secondary school. Well done. Ah, uh, Nim, congratulations, my darling. I saw your pictures on social media. Well done. I bid all of you welcome Nomlanga, Mr. Osadolo, Maureen, Justina, Lizelle, Paul Walker, Nde Kumalo. God bless you all. I'll be, my extend, my extend my regards to your beautiful boy, Biko. Huh? Osha, welcome, welcome. Georgina, good to see you. Nkasio, be good to see you. Just all of you continue to give glory to God. We mean serious business tonight. We are going to be dealing a cruel blow to the spirit of poverty. Poverty, 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 poverty. Whether it is activated poverty, whether it's uh, environmental poverty, whether it's geographical poverty, whether it's allocated poverty, whether it's inherited poverty, whether it is bondaged poverty, whether it's cursing poverty, whether it is covenanted poverty, whether it is magnetic poverty, whether it's spell poverty, whether it is generational poverty, no matter the form, no matter the shape, this is the night of the Holy Ghost. Tonight we are going to deal a cruel blow to that force called poverty. Poverty has terminated so many promising destinies. Cast your mind back. The sort of family you come from. Do people make it in your family? In my own family. <laughs> it was only my father that I know made it. And even upon that, they gave him hell. 
in my own family I don't recall anybody making it it was my father I recall who made it think back in your own family who has made it did your father make it did your mother make it cast your mind back your grandfather what kind of job did he do back then in Africa there was nothing like a, an engineer nothing like um, a, 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 a surveyor an architect you were either a farmer a native doctor uh, or someone that mends bones who are also native doctors or you're a midwife you're the one that they go to to give birth or that yeah some 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 people were businessmen and businesswomen or did your own family did they, are you notorious for selling wood some people here in their families the firewood was sold the bible talks about um hewers of wood and fetchers of water think back into your history who made it yes when i came out into the world my own father was an aircraft avionics engineer i think that was what motivated me to be a systems analyst that's what motivated me to be an IT consultant. But the fact is, I know his own father was not an aeronautic engineer. His own father was not an aviation engineer. His own mother was most certainly not an aviation engineer. There was nothing aeronautical about her. Think, what did your mother do? Think, what did your, what did your relatives do? Who made it? Was your family characterized by wealth? Are you the first generation of wealth in your family? I broke down the different types of, um, of, of poverty that we have. As many of us are here, our faces are different. There's different types of poverty pursuing people. Poverty is, the, is, 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 is that bucket that can never be filled up. Poverty is the bag that can never stand up straight. No matter what you put inside. There's activated poverty, bondage poverty, cursing poverty, covenanted poverty, magnetic poverty, spell poverty, generational poverty. The fact is, the good news is it can be dealt with. This is the night where we deal with that spirit. And you need to understand the satanic makeup of the torment of poverty. It's not just the altars of poverty. Because when decrees and declarations are made on altars, there are spirits, the errand boys, the demons that go into effect. Poverty is a spirit, it's not a concept. Poverty is not a notion, it's real. The good news is that it can be tackled. Specifically tonight, the Lord is leading me to tackle generational poverty. And I sincerely pray for you that after today's um, preaching, please share the video, share the video, that others may be touched by this message. People are suffering, people are dying, people are confused. People are forlorn. People are perplexed. People are walking like elephants and eating like an ant. People are wondering what to do next. People are running out of options. As you share the video, you are doing the work of God. For doing the work of God, you will not survive. Receive your deliverance from the spirit of poverty. In the name of Jesus. Tonight, we are going to do a number of things through our prayer points. What are we going to do? Number one, I've mentioned we are tackling. The first type, the main type of poverty we are tackling is generational poverty. We are going to be pulling down the stronghold of poverty tonight. We are going to be binding the strong man and the strong woman of poverty tonight. We are going to be destroying satanic weapons of poverty. We are going to break the chains of poverty. 
we are going to break adjustment to poverty we are going to break the chains of failure tonight through our prayer points please carry on serving God worshiping God by your choice of language don't stop it's not an Hollywood movie it's a participative session the deliverance and the testimonies we've enjoyed on this platform comes about as a result that people participate I want you to please participate tonight we are going to reverse the curse of poverty tonight we are going to get power against inherited poverty the poverty that is inside the blood the poverty that is in the geographical region where various of us live some people would have been okay but for where they live some people are afflicted with geographical poverty tonight you are going to pray your way out of that satanic geographical zone in jesus name tonight as we pray we are also going to break the covenant of poverty tonight as we pray the lord shall give unto us the power to get wealth tonight as we pray we are going to war against dreams of poverty have you been sleeping and in your dreams you see yourself spending coins you see yourself wearing rags you see a satanic twin somebody that looks like you in the spirit share the video i beg of you dawn you said you have issue with sharing i don't know what's happening to your um uh, facebook computer connection my darling because from what i understand you even opened a new account so i don't know what's going on i uh make sure you're my friend on facebook make sure you have your notification set on um that way you at least i can see you here so i that mean i know that means you can share in our sessions we've been having some problems of late uh on facebook just make sure you're not caught out hallelujah tonight you're going to get power to get wealth we are going to war against the dreams of poverty are you dreaming and you see yourself walking barefooted are you dreaming and you see yourself wearing tattered clothes are you dreaming and then you see yourself spending money lavishly in the spiritual realm are you dreaming you see yourself spending coins are you dreaming and you are seeing rats and mice all of these are dreams of poverty tonight we are going to destroy the dreams of poverty if you haven't watched yesterday's edition or the previous two editions of altar versus altar please go and watch them why because we are dealing with hello becky we are dealing with animal we dealt with animalistic spirits one of the spirits we dealt with was the spirit of the rat whenever you see the rat the rat signifies poverty witchcraft induced and projected poverty we prayed again we came against that power in the last two sessions and yesterday's session if you haven't watched those sessions please i beg of you go and watch them again tonight we are going to destroy the cage of poverty there are a lot of people inside the cage of poverty there are a lot of people locked up in spiritual prisons of poverty today we are going to deal with it today we are going to destroy the cauldrons of poverty today we are going to remove the mark of poverty tonight we are going to challenge foundational poverty tonight we are going to get power against profitless hard work tonight we're going to disgrace the trap of poverty i have no power of my own there is nothing i do outside of the tenements of the bible or the rules of the bible i follow the bible to the letter and the bible is my only point of reference as i do this work of god i don't mix the word of god i don't mix it in any way shape or form 
and so what that means is that the prescription you get on this altar is exactly as God wants it on this altar is Jesus first Jesus last Jesus only Jesus and only ever Jesus we have praised the name of the living God before we go any further it's important I tell you this that as we have come here to pray tonight let it not be that as we are praying heaven is covering its nose why would heaven cover its nose why would heaven cover its nose heaven will cover its nose because we have not begged for forgiveness heaven will cover its nose because there's a lot of us with all sorts of sins in our genetic makeup ancestral sins that are left unconfessed ancestral sins that have not been cried over so before we do anything we need to recognize that the spirit of poverty could have come as a result of an evil inheritance Prince William inherited the crown of glory he will one day be the king of England the grace of God willing of course and he'll be the life a lot of us come from families where we didn't inherit any royal seat we inherited poverty we inherited shortage we inherited lack we inherited disgrace we need to recognize that there's been an evil pattern and what the spirit, well, what tends to happen is that a lot of our ancestors committed wrongs and then when other members of the family decide okay let's go and let's go and understand what exactly we need to do to get it right they then also undertake fetish means they go and continue bowing down to idols that they should have left and then the third heaven get angry spirit of god gets angry because when you bow down to the spirit of idolatry you block your way and the wickedness and the poverty of generations past continues to be perpetrated this is the hour of mercy are you tired of living your life without a purpose are you here and you are tired of suffering from constant failure in life are you here and you suffer losses frequently are you here and you know it that you have been bewitched are you here and very early on in this life you were abandoned to fend for yourself without any helper are you here and you know you are fighting the battle of occultic witchcraft attack this is the hour of mercy beg God for forgiveness let the very first set of prayers we're going into is deep confessions for the forgiveness of sins second chronicles 17 and 14 says that in the name of, says if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then i will hear from heaven and i will forgive their sin and i will heal their land i want you to take this confession with me say my father my father as i pray today heal the land of my destiny as i pray tonight heal the land of my of my finances as I pray tonight, heal the land of my wealth. I want you to make these confessions with me, please. Say, O oh Lord my God, I have sinned against you and my fellow man. I have been unfaithful. I have disobeyed your commandments, which you have given me for my own good. I have oppressed the poor in my daily works, the widows, the fatherless, and strangers. I have not paid any regard. My heart has been turned away from you, and my ways have been very foolish. 
I sincerely confess all the sins on behalf of my fathers and myself, on behalf of my mothers and myself. I want you to repeat after me, please, very clearly. Say, we and our fathers have shed blood of innocent people. We have committed adulteries, abortion and ritual sacrifices to different idols. We have polluted our blood and defiled the temples of our lives through various sins and occult practices. The blood of the innocent and our own murdered innocent victims cry out against us to your throne daily. If you are here, you're a woman, you've committed abortion. Please mean this confessional prayers. Because a lot of the times when good things are coming, the spirit of the children who were aborted previously intercepts the good things because those children are angry they are angry because they've not been given a chance at life it's called the abortive spirit you may have killed them physically spiritually they are still alive standing guard and watching you so when we talk about confessing, about shedding the blood of innocent people, not just the women, if you're a man here and you've paid for abortion, university days you had girlfriends that said, I'm pregnant, what are we going to do? And you say, come out and come out and come out and remove it, remove it. it. It is your own interest to better pray this prayer as well because that problem, that get and lose, that puncture of incoming and oncoming joy, could be as a result of the fact that you, your money financed the death of an innocent. So please confess. Say, my father, I have sown deceitfully under oath in your name. I have said things I should not have said. I have refused to do your work. As it ought to be done. You are here. You are supposed to do the work of God. And you keep running from the work of God. Or you are here. You are supposed to do the work of God. And you give going to party your priority. <laughs> I feel sorry for you. Be true to yourself and make this confession. Have mercy on me for refusing to do your work. As it ought to be done. You are going to church and you, are, you don't have any work in church. You are one of those that go to church and then you touch the seat with your finger. You say that they didn't even clean the seat. Self. Why didn't you clean it? It's the work of God. Or you've gone to somebody else's Facebook. A lot of us are online preachers now. You go to somebody's Facebook wall. And you start to abuse a pastor doing the work of God you better start confessing and asking God to forgive you I want you to say we have neglected to give you through honor and glory that belongs to you alone we have at various times and ways robbed you of your tithes and offerings and bluntly refuse to pay our vows unto you. Therefore, evil locusts have been sent into our labor and harvest. We work very hard, yet we profit very little. Nothing works right for us. And all our labor are with drudgery and suffering. Say, my father, you promised that if I confess my sin and I'm faithful and just, that you will cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Say, my father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I repent of any evil. I repent of any of the evil which I have done and my ancestors have done. 
a lot of our ancestors committed blunders and never apologized or begged God. Rather, they went and got bigger altars. Say, I have repented of the evil which I and my ancestors have done. I have forsaken your ways. I have refused to be faithful to you. Say, my father, my God, recall to your great mind the words of your scriptures that says that the soul that sinneth it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. This is Ezekiel 18 and 20. Say, my fathers and my mothers have sinned. They are largely dead. If they are not dead, say, and some of them are still alive. But we are, I am bearing their punishment here. Say, my father, have mercy upon me for the sins of my mothers and fathers. Forgive us our terrible sins. I repent of all the evil I've done to my fellow man. I've lied to my fellow man. I've cheated my fellow man. Forgive me. I repent of the grief. Of course, a lot of people have you you you, you you've made people cry. <laughs> you may not know you've made people cry, but you've made people cry. And God help you if you've made a pastor cry. Lots of you, yeah, you've made the motherless cry. You've made the fatherless cry. Some have made pastors cry. A pastor that has labored over you. You were the reason the pastor went to bed and couldn't sleep. The pastor is looking at the ceiling. The pastor will turn like this. The pastor is servant of God. <laughs> you need to ask God to forgive you. I repent of the grief I've caused other people. I feel totally sorry I've, for the wounds I've inflicted upon your heart. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit can be grieved. Because of some of our actions, the Holy Spirit has cried. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is God. As a result of what we've done, sometimes the Holy Spirit cries. Say, I'm very sorry for the wounds that have caused your tender heart. Holy Spirit, I'm sorry for making you cry. Say it all. These are not my words. I, I am a slave of Jesus Christ. All I am is a servant of the Most High God. I'm only doing what he has asked me to do. If you like, feel too big to confess. Watch us as if it's a Nollywood movie. The joke is on you. There are people here that have caused the Holy Spirit to cry. Say, my father, see from your heavenly throne the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the world for my sins. Say, my God, let the blood of Jesus Christ redeem me from the consequences of my past sin. God bless you, Belinda. God bless you, Joker. God bless you, Nena. God bless you, Jennifer. God bless you, Nkiru. God bless you, Belinda. God bless you. God bless you, Don. God bless you, Nkasiobi. God bless you, Paula. God bless you, Omalicha. God 
God bless you, Lima. It may come as a shock to some of you that the Holy Spirit can cry. He has cried because of you and I sometimes. Say, let the blood of Jesus redeem me from the consequences of my past sins. My past errors and my past mistakes. Say, my father, see the anguish of my soul. God bless you, Golden Heart. God bless you, Fatma. Say, see the anguish of my soul. And with the blood of Jesus, nullify the evil effects and consequences of my past sins. Say, my God, have mercy. They are too heavy for me. They are too heavy for me. Blood of Jesus, do your work in me. Just keep saying it. Blood of Jesus, do your work in me. Do your work in me. Blood of Jesus, do your work in my life. Do your work in my finances. Blood of Jesus, do your work in me. Blood of Jesus, release me. Blood of Jesus, do your work in 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 me. Do your work in me. In Jesus' name, amen. For those of you that brought quality repentance before God, well done. God is not a wicked God. He's a living God, the God of Elijah. He's a lion of the tribe of Judah. He makes a way where there's no way. Tonight, he will make streams appear in the desert. Tonight, the spirits of desertification will be dealt with. Your Eden, my Eden, shall flourish again. There shall be rivers in our Negev, rivers in our deserts our God confirms his place as the only question without an answer the only answer for all questions our God is the solution to all repeat after me say I dip my tongue in the blood of Jesus I dip my tongue in the blood of Jesus I dip my tongue in the blood of Jesus. I mantle my tongue with fire. I mantle my tongue with fire. Fire of God possess me as I enter prayers. Say tonight as I pray, I fight from the third heavens. Tonight, as I pray, I knock on the door of heaven. Heaven must answer me. Tonight, I knock on the door of heaven. Heaven must answer me. Say, I knock on the door of heaven tonight as I pray. I knock on the door of heaven as I pray. Say I dip my tongue in the blood of Jesus as I pray. Why it's important we dip our tongue in the blood of Jesus is that we energize our tongue. Why we dip our tongue in the blood of Jesus is that it's actually a communion of a sort. With the blood of Jesus upon your tongue, you are mantled and endued with power. It means your words are not ordinary. It means your utterances are not ordinary. It means your disposition is not ordinary. It means that you arise in prayer and power backed by the blood of Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Say, I dip my tongue in the blood of Jesus. I dip my tongue in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. I was saying something to us earlier. I said, poverty is real. Poverty can be in the blood. Poverty can become the signature of a person, a place, a family, a continent. Poverty is one of the byproducts of the evil altars. Here we have been praying for the past few days. Going into the third week now. Altar versus altar. We have come to an understanding about what an altar is. It's a place of transaction. It's a place where God and man meets. The altar is a place of warfare. The altar is where we can make contact with God or with the devil. Upon the altar, God can be provoked into action. We have seen the various examples of people in the Bible who built altars for God. Solomon built altars. David built altars. Elijah built altars. Look at the words of Leviticus 6, 12 and 13 that and the fire upon the altar shall be kept burning on it. It shall not be allowed to go out. The priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order upon it. And he shall burn on it the fat of the priest of the peace offerings. The fire of God shall be kept burning. It shall never go out. When it talks about the wood, the priest shall burn wood on it every morning. It means your day must start with prayer. There's different types of altars. Your heart is a type of altar. Your room or wherever you pray and have a regular contact encounter with God is also a type of altar. This Facebook wall the Dr. Jesus prayer wall is an altar. You can have the family altar somewhere that the family gathers to pray. Your church is also another altar. There are conferences where there are prayer rooms. Those prayer rooms become altars. When an altar is set up, it's because you want to either invite God or the devil. I've mentioned some goodly and great and godly altars. There are also satanic altars. A satanic altar is the operating operational base of the powers of darkness. The devil uses it to talk to his people and satanic intermediaries also use it. Who can build an altar? Somebody with an authority in the family, in the environment, can build it. Somebody with a mandate and a spiritual connection. Say every child of the devil that has ever built an altar to Satan in my family, say I scatter it. I scatter every altar built by a child of the devil in my family. I scatter by fire every altar built by the child of the devil in my family. What do you raise an altar for? Mm -hmm. You can raise an altar to bless people. 
you can raise an altar to seek favor you can raise an altar to destroy people these are satanic altars you can raise an altar to cast people down say every altar raise to cast me down i set you ablaze every altar raised to cast me down i set you ablaze every altar raised to cast me down i set you ablaze every altar raised to frustrate me i set you ablaze every altar raised to cast down my finances i set you ablaze an altar cannot just be built like that There's always a purpose to every altar. Now, the today we're dealing with the altar of poverty. There's all types of altars. Today's altars that we are dealing with is the altar of poverty. When we say an altar of poverty, what do we mean? There are altars that have been erected and set up to remove from people, to puncture people. Altars that have been set up to destroy the wealth of people. Altars that mean that a billionaire can have six billion on Monday. By Friday, they have only five thousand naira in their account. It's possible. Are you here and you don't understand why you work like an elephant but you eat like an ant? Are you here? You're saying to yourself, I've prayed, I've prayed. It's not a bad thing to pray. It's a bad thing to underpray. It's not a bad thing to overpray. You can never overpray. You can only underpray. Every prayer we are going to render tonight will go a long way. To destroying the altars of poverty. There are seven signs of po there are seven signs that can tell you that somebody is suffering from poverty. Chronic long term lack. Monday you don't have. Tuesday you don't have. Friday you don't have. Sunday you don't have. There's never a time they can ask whether you have that you have. That spirit of long-term lack is called poverty. I want you to say every spirit of long-term lack die by fire. Every Right now, there are a lot of parents on this platform. And your children are all going back to school now. I can see some parents on the wall saying, blood of Jesus, cover my children as they go to school. Yes. And we are going to intercede for children going back to school as well. But the, part, the point I'm trying to make is children are going back to school. There are parents here that can't afford to buy school, school clothes for their children. There are parents here that can't afford to buy shoes for their children. There are actually parents here, some of who are afraid when the children say, I have to go back to school. You don't know how that school uniform is going to appear. You don't know how that school shoe is going to appear. You don't know who is going to help you, where help is going to come from. Eating is a problem. Talk less of somebody, a child that wants school shoe, school bag, bag for PE, shoe for PE. But oh my God. Chronic long-term shortage is a sign of poverty. 
the second sign of poverty is when you give your work away actually I'm a victim of this because I give things away too much I give away my books but no as a child of God there's value on your works don't just give them away a third sign of poverty is refusing to pay other people people have worked for you but you don't pay them you sit on the money You are refusing to pay people that have sweated. The Bible says, do not cheat a man who has sweated for you. When a man whose money you are sitting on curses you, the curse doesn't, it, 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 it's straight. Because there's legality. You are here. You have the money to pay tithe and offering, but you choose not to pay. There's something the book of Joel talks about. Locus. Pama worm, caterpillar, canker worm. They are part of God's own army. He can use it to devour and use it to rid people of what they think they have. If you're here, you don't pay tithe, you don't pay offering. Change. You can't, you can you cannot be holding calculator for God. You are here and you know people that have money and you hate them. There are some people, once they realize you have money, they hate you. That hating people for what they have can actually be a cause of wealth, a cause of poverty. Because it's what you admire that comes to you. If you hate the fact somebody has money, you see a pastor who has money or somebody who has a big house and big car and you just hate the person because you can't buy it. But somebody else, but you now hate the person. You are inviting poverty. Please, if that is the characteristic of you, change. Change. When you see people who have made it and people who have money, say, my father, that God, please do my own too do my own too let my time come when you are in a habit of making poor financial decisions recently in Nigeria there was a scandal that broke people were putting money into this uh, scheme called MMM 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 he was an Eastern European, a man that had, that had done the cheating. Did it in Russia, made billions. They found him there. They ran him out of the country. He went to several other countries. And then Jesus is Lord. The guy came to Nigeria, used the same formula. He barred the whole country. People lost billions in MMM. MMM was a poor financial decision. Will come and tell you you are going to get a thousand percent return every day for 30 days you invest 10 pounds on monday by the end of the month 10 pounds has become 500 pounds i did it once a so-called friend of mine he had told me about his scheme i put money in the scheme they took my money i called her i said look at what they've done to my money yo. The girl didn't put her own money in again. I was lucky it happened in this country. I went to Barclays. Barclays gave me my money back. May God deliver us from oh, any, any, any poor habit, any poor financial decision we've made. May God deliver us from it. And then when you criticize people spending money that they have, somebody has money and can afford to buy the latest Chanel bag, please don't begrudge them. 
it's a different thing if the person has gone to prostitute herself because there are some girls that sleep around for bags if you're going around and you're prostituting yourself for a chanel bag, there are girls in london for the sake of Lou, 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 Louis Vuitton, for the sake of Christian Laboutin, for the sake of Gucci shoes, girls are sleeping around. It's a sick life. Must you carry Gucci? A lot of those girls that even carry Gucci can't spell Gucci. It's, a, it's by force. You must wear Dior. You can't afford Dior. You go and steal, you go and steal somebody's husband. You go and borrow to buy deal. You go and borrow money you don't have to buy what you don't need to impress people you don't like. Somebody wants to wear Gianfranco Ferrer. Okay, spell Gianfranco Ferrer. You will hear G, 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 Franco, F, R, A, N, H, Franco, H, there's H now, it's Franco, Ferrer. Your ignorance gives you away. Gucci is not by force. Jean Franco Ferrer is not by force. Chloe is not by force. Calvin Klein is not by force. You want to wear Arabian oud. You want to wear Arabian oud. Oud is spelled O U D. You but you go. You want to wear oud, and then they say spell oud. Ibrukwe O U D U. Fowl. Fowl. Don't disgrace yourself because you want to wear wood. Poor financial habit. Poor financial habit. And if you are here, you are judging people. Oh, this one is carrying Gucci. This one is carrying Jean-Franco Ferrer. This one is carrying... Uh, 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 uh carrying here and you start to kill yourself but somebody's Brazilian is 500 pound you will sleep with Musilu sleep with Kajetan sleep with uh, Oluwole sleep with uh, Fatai sleep with uh, Vijay even India Sleep with uh, Chung Chung Chingo. Sleep with uh, Davido. Because of what? You want to carry Peruvian hair. And you haven't got a piece of land. There are girls striking it hot deals. All the time they send me information about Mama. Come and buy a piece of land here. Come and buy this here. Come and buy that here. So if you to go and buy land, you are buying Brazilian. Brazilian that dandruff will still attack. Vanity! You've got to stop it. If you're here, you judge people by the kind of car that you're driving. If you look at me... I and you judge me by the kind of car I'm driving. You go, Miss Rodo, <laughs> my car will seriously fool you. I'm telling you. You will see my car, you say, is that what she drives? You don't know what's happening behind the car, so don't just... I've been in circles where girls would judge me. Because they felt, oh, I'm not carrying a good enough designer bag. The joke is on you. Criticizing the way somebody is spending their money is a sign of poverty. People are not obligated to spend money in the way that you want them to spend their money. The person's money is the person's money. Hallelujah. 
is poverty. Poverty is when you go from head to the tail. Poverty is when you aim for nothing in life. Poverty is when you throw your net into the wrong sea and catch the wrong fish. Say, I refuse to catch the wrong fish in the name of Jesus. Poverty is washing more than you can hang. Poverty is when, you know, you have pencil. Yeah, like this. This is a pencil. It's one of my posh pencils I got from one of my clients. There's pencil. And at the bottom, there's an eraser. When your eraser wears out more than the pencil, it's called poverty. When you learn nothing from your mistake, it's poverty. You are talented, but you're not successful. It's poverty. You are busy, 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 busy doing everything. But no achievement. Poverty. When you keep repeating mistakes. Poverty. You are thinking, you're thinking, 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 but no purpose to your thinking. That is poverty. That is poverty. We are now going to deal with the spirit of poverty, my people. I hope you're ready. I wanted to settle down and deal with this spirit because it is attacking a lot of children of God. Children of God are suffering. Children of God are crying. Children of God are weeping. Children of God are living lives that are not their own. Children of God are not happy. Children of God have been magnetically drawn backwards. Children of God are suffering lack that they should not be suffering. Children of God are being laughed at by the children of the devil. Children of God are occupying the tail region of life. Children of God who should be shining superstars are not. Tonight as we pray we are going to um, force ancestral powers to vomit our wealth. We've been robbed for too long. Do I have people here? The first power we are going to attack is the spirit of the family idol. We are going to force them to vomit our wealth. Hallelujah. Idols of our father's house have the ability to swallow blessings meant for the family. They swallow it by ways of by, by way of covenant. They swallow it by ways of vows made by our ancestors. As we pray these first few prayers, we are going to force our prosperity out of their belly, out of their grip, and out of their hold. The first prayer you have to pray is this. Say, family idols that have been swallowing my prosperity, vomit my prosperity and die. 
family idols swallowing my prosperity vomit my prosperity and die my prosperity is not your portion vomit my prosperity and die Say, O oh, heavens of my destiny, open and rain down blessings that will elevate my destiny in the name of Jesus. Rain down blessings that will elevate my destiny in the name of Jesus. Say, every good Thing diverted away by my family idol come back to me by fire why am I talking about idolatry tonight because it's one of the main causes is the black man's number one problem worshipping of idols has love led people individual families and communities nations continent into bondage what appears to like innocent worship of idols has led to terrible bondage simple things such as covenants enacted by Kulanot and alligator pepper have put people in trouble you won't look at Kulanot and alligator pepper and think that the problem of your life and destiny emanates from Kola nut and alligator pepper, but it's possible. Kola nut and alligator pepper cowrie shells can be what has resulted, what is keeping you in bondage. I want you to repeat after me. Say, covenant of kola nut and alligator pepper keeping me in bondage. Scatter. Covenant of kola nut and alligator pepper. Holding my finances hostage. Say scatter in the name of Jesus. Covenant of cola nut and alligator pepper. Covenant of cola nut and alligator pepper. Very basic, traditional, nonsensical items. But those are the padlocks that have locked destinies because they threw alligator pepper, cola nut, they poured palm wine, or poured palm oil on the head of an idol. Then your destiny is, is arrested. No! Say covenant of cola nut and alligator pepper. In Igbo land, there's a proverb. They say that he who brings cola nut brings life. Nothing is done without cola nut in Igbo land. In Yoruba land, I believe that's the same case as well. Yoruba people here, help me. Show Tonya Bo Toko. You guys treat cola nut in Yoruba land as we do in Igbo land. Obi. And people from various other nations on the earth what is your equivalent of cola nut and alligator pepper what is used when they want to speak to the deities in the land what do they use in liberia what do they use in sierra leone do you guys use cola nut too you use yam do you use uh, uh, Coco Yam, what do you use? I have people from other parts of Africa here and Asia. What do you use? Cola nut and alligator pepper covenant scatter. Every idol that has swallowed my prosperity as a result of chewing on coal cola nut and alligator pepper scatter in the name of jesus say the problem of poverty in my family inspired by idols die in the name of jesus the problem of poverty 
the problem of poverty permitted in my family inspired by idols die in the name of Jesus say spirit of rising and falling die by fire some of you are here you've tasted money before you've tasted proper money I want everybody to declare, say, covenant of traditional beer, covenant of tri the dry gin, covenant of whiskey, covenant of palm wine, covenant of kai kai, covenant of hot drink, poured out as libation, holding my finances captive. Say, I pollute you with the blood of Jesus. And as you say that prayer in the mind of your eye, Envision the blood of Jesus swallowing that liquid up. Envision the blood of Jesus swallowing up dry gin. Envision the blood of Jesus swallowing up whiskey. Envision the blood of Jesus swallowing up palm wine. Envision the blood of Jesus swallowing up that satanic liquid poured onto the head of that idol that has now become the God in your family. Say ancestral blood sacrifice because ancestral powers hate prosperity with perfect hatred. The reason why they don't want wealth to come into the family is because they, be, they cage people with poverty. They are very jealous of those that make an effort to prosper. Why they attack the living is that they want to perpetuate their evil works of poverty in the living members. Of the family say every unconscious demonic marriage with the spirit of poverty in my foundation break because there are people here from families that have been married to poverty can you imagine a family being married to poverty every man in the house married to the spirit of poverty every woman married to the spirit of poverty my god say every unconscious and conscious demonic marriage with the spirit of poverty in my foundation break in the name of jesus say every ancestral blood sacrifice crying out against my prosperity be silenced forever by the blood of Jesus every ancestral blood sacrifice crying out against my prosperity be silenced forever by the blood of Jesus say family familiar spirits attached to my foundation because familiar spirits are the ones that report when people are trying to make it familiar spirits report when people are trying to get money say family familiar spirits attached to my foundation receive fire and die family familiar spirits attached to my foundation receive fire and die in the name of jesus say demonic ancestral spirits hunting and seizing my prosperity become blind and die because in so many of our families there are demonic ancestral spirits making sure that through the ages prosperity is seized from members of the family ah they can only see you because they've got eyes command their eyes to become blind command that they die say angels of the living god dagger the ancestral spirits Hunting and seizing my prosperity. Locate them with your dagger and stab them to death. Stab them to death. Say hunters and fishers of the Lord. Locate the powers hunting and seizing my prosperity. Locate them and dagger them. I love the dagger. Nobody argues with the dagger. The dagger has no competition. When the dagger is used, pium, whatever is the problem, you get quick victory.
tonight the angels of the living god will secure quick victory for us in jesus name say demonic ancestral spirits that are looking for my money looking for my finances receive the dagger and die say every call drawn of poverty from my father's house fighting against my prosperity break and scatter in some of our houses there are called drones of poverty where they cook the wealth of the family called drones of poverty from my father's house fighting against my prosperity break and scatter in the name of jesus come on say any power from my father's house that has sold me to poverty Die! Any power from my father's house that has sold me to poverty, die. Any power from my mother's house that has sold me to poverty, die. In the name of Jesus. Any power from my mother's house that has sold me to poverty, die. Foundational witchcraft spirits claiming my prosperity. That's another thing. You can be making the money and the spirits are saying it's our own. It's our own. No! Foundational witchcraft spirits claiming my prosper, prosperity. Release them and die in the name of Jesus. Foundational witchcraft spirits claiming my wealth. Claiming my finances. Claiming my prosperity. Release them and die in the name of Jesus. Say every ancestral pot of witchcraft fighting progress in my family break and scatter say breakers of the lord locate that ancestral pot of witchcraft every family has an ancestral pot of witchcraft fighting the progress in their family command the breakers of the lord to break and scatter that pot of witchcraft break and scatter that pot introducing poverty every ancestral pot of witchcraft fighting progress in my family break and scatter in the name of jesus say foundational witchcraft spirit stealing my prosperity at night be exposed and die some of you when you sleep you're stolen from that power stealing from you in your dream is the foundational witchcraft spirit that's what it specializes in doing say foundational witchcraft spirit stealing my prosperity at night be exposed and die in the name of jesus say ancestral cultural initiations all this in in, in london in the uk this summer everywhere hey 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 new yam festival new yam festival new yam festival and people were going they've now brought new yam festival to uk is an ancestral cultural initiation it introduces people back to the poverty that they want to run away from say every ancestor if you're here and you know you went for new yam festival in europe america in Asia, they are now taking the thing everywhere spain india self new yam festival if you know you've attended a new yam festival this year you need to go for deliverance say ancestral cultural initiations resulting into poverty in my life die demonic effects of polygamy some of us come from families whereby our fathers had more than one wife no. say demonic effects of polygamy working against my prosperity be reversed now in the name of Jesus. Say every inherited occult power resisting my angels of blessings fall down and die. Every inherited occult power resisting my angels of blessings fall down and die in the name of Jesus. I release my life from the iron grip of family poverty. Say I release my life. I release my life. I release my life from the evil grip of family poverty in the name of Jesus. Say I, Sandra, call your name. 
I refuse to agree with the spirit of poverty in any area in my life. I refuse to agree. I refuse to cooperate with the evil voice, with, with, with the spirit of poverty. I will not toe the line of poverty. I will not obey the voice of poverty. I will not obey the voice of poverty. I will not obey the voice of lack. I will not obey the voice of destitution. I will not obey the voice of Satan. I will not obey the voice of my father's house. I will not obey the voice of my mother's house. I will not obey the voice of Satan. Concerning my wealth, concerning my career, I will not obey the voice of Satan. 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 Say the voice of my prosperity will not be silenced. The voice of my prosperity will not be silenced. Imagine your life as a television. Somebody can come and increase the volume or decrease the volume. They can come and just put contrast on, put it off. They can choose to make the TV black and white and color white because they have the remote control. And that's what ancestral powers are doing with a lot of our lives. They are rendering our lives to be as dry without volume, silencing the volume of our finances, silencing the voices of our destiny. That's why we pray, my people, so we don't become victims. Say the voice of my finances will not die. The voice of my finances will not expire. Say my father increase the decibels of my financial voice. Increase the decibels of my finances. Say my voice. My voice. My voice. Say it three times. Attract prosperity. Attract blessings. Attract benefits. Attract resources. Attract contracts. Attract contacts. Attract helpers. In Jesus' name. Let's just begin to celebrate Jesus. He has given our finances a new name. We have prayed our ways out of poverty. We've prayed our way out of shame. If you've only just started watching this video, please go and watch it from the beginning. Because we are now winding up. We're coming to the end. Please get your communion items. Get your communion items. Get your communion items. Hallelujah. Let's pray our way to success. Pray our way to wealth. Pray our way to open heavens. Pray our way to open victories. Let's pray our way to spectacular success. Get your communion items. Get your communion items. This communion is special. We are breaking the spirit of poverty as a result of what we're doing now. Lift up your bread. Our Lord Jesus, before he was given up to death, a death which he freely accepted, he took bread, gave God thanks and praise and said, take this, all of you, eat it. This is my body which is given up for you. As you eat the broken body of Jesus Christ today, the backbone of poverty is broken in your life and my life. The backbone of poverty is broken in the name of Jesus. 
the backbone of poverty is broken in the name of Jesus. The backbone of destitution is broken in the name of Jesus. The backbone of lack is broken in the name of Jesus. The backbone of shame is broken in the name of Jesus. This communion is blessed. Eat the bread. As we get ready to drink the wine. Along the same vein. He took the cup of wine. Give God thanks and praise and said, take this all of you and drink it. This is my blood which is given up for you, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It is shed for you and for all men so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. As you drink this communion wine, every personality of poverty living inside of us, as we drink it, as I drink it, as you drink it, that personality of ancestral poverty is melted away like the untimely birth of a woman. As we drink this communion wine today, the stronghold that permits the altar of poverty to locate us, whatever we do and wherever we go to, that stronghold is broken. As we drink this communion wine, the interference of Satan in our life is stopped. As we drink this communion wine, the devil cannot use our finances to torment us or punish us. As we drink this communion wine, as children of God, we begin to scale the higher heights of wealth, increase, plenty. Lack will not be our portion again. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This communion is blessed. Please drink. In Jesus' name. Please, this is a point we pray for Dr. Jesus Ministries. Oh, is Leslie here? I wanted us to have an interaction tonight. There was a testimony she shared. And I wanted to use the Facebook feature to invite Leslie Walker. Leslie, are you here, my love? There was a dream. There was a testimony she had. And I wanted her to tell us what the testimony was. And I wanted to use it as an opportunity to help people understand um that dream Leslie 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 Walker darling no Lizelle Paul Walker Lizelle are you here darling is there anybody watching today that wants to share their testimony online before we pray for Dr Jesus Ministries say the grace and call it a day is there anybody that has a testimony they want to share because this is a new strategy i don't just want to be putting testimony up yeah lizelle paul walker i saw you earlier come on do you have a testimony you want to share before we pray for dr jesus ministries and then wrap up because Facebook has this wonderful feature where at the same time as I'm doing live I can invite somebody to give us a heads up invite somebody to tell us their own version of the truth hallelujah 
Lizelle, you are here. Okay, I'm connecting to you now. I want you to add uh, that. I'm inviting you to broadcast. So you are going to see the invitation. Please accept it. Hallelujah. Have you seen the invitation, my darling? Are you accepting it? It should be on your screen, my darling. Accept the invitation. Hallelujah. Lizelle, the invitation is extended to you. Are you going to accept it or not? You did say you were going to accept it earlier. Lizelle, my darling, are you seeing the invitation? Do we have anybody else who wants to tell us that? Oh, there she is. Hello. Oh, Lord, <laughs> hello, my sweetie pie. How are you, my sugar plum? I, I am well, Pastor. I'm fine tonight. No, I've never done this before. So, hey, congratulations. We give you a round of applause. Look at you. She's so shy. Thank I'm sure she's, I'm sure she's blushing. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so it's not, that can, it's not only me that should be talking. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody say hello to Lizelle. We have Lizelle Paul Walker. Honey, you you me. You wrote to me. And he's the first. So Dr. Jesus first. Has Lizelle gone? Oh no, wow. She don't go. Gabio is you. The devil is a liar. It seems Lizelle is off screen. Well, uh, let me tell you what she wrote to me. And if she comes back, fine. If she doesn't come back. Then we may have somebody else or just call it a night. You know, she had a dream. Uh, you all remember when we were praying. And I asked everybody to, yeah, your network dropped. Now, wow. Let me invite you again. Please stay in, in stay where you know the network is stable. Don't move around. Stay somewhere in your house. That as soon as you get the invitation, please stay in one place in your house that you know the um, reception works. She disappeared again. I think I'm going to just um, tell everybody what her testimony is. So she said, hello, mommy. I want to share a dream I had with you. I believe is my deliverance. She says, you know, when you did the prayer and told us to turn anti-clockwise, I was singing with you, evil arrow, go back to your sender. I had a dream that I was running out of my uncle's yard and it was very dark and I was running for my life when I stopped running, I realized I had left the bag I was carrying with me. I did not go back for the bag. But when I visited the doctor last Friday, she told me that the medication I was taking is no longer needed. Glory to God. I just came back for a blood test. I believe that the sickness I had from for years came from my own family because of that envy. That bag was my problem. I believe it. And Lizelle says, thank you, Jesus, for my healing and my deliverance. Thank you for your prayers, mommy. I bless God for the day I met you. Yes, baby, me too. You have taught me how to pray and you have given me so much wisdom. God will bless you, man. Amen. Lizelle, 
This is a magnificent testimony. This testimony is permanent in the mighty name of Jesus. When she told me the dream, I said to her, I said, go back to God and say, if that bag contained good things, I claim that bag back in Jesus' name. Because you shouldn't be leaving your bag anywhere. But remember the context of that night. Evil arrow, go back to your sender. The baggage of sickness went back to sender. Why? How do we know? She went to hospital and the disease that she'd been suffering from for years wasn't there again. I dip my tongue in the pool of the blood of Jesus and I declare over the life of everybody here that every baggage of shame, every baggage of disgrace, every baggage of problem, every baggage introduced by your father's house or mother's house or my father's house or mother's house, every baggage introduced from a jealous child of the devil every baggage introduced by a child of the devil every baggage of hatred they want people to start hating you that bag of rejection bag of hatred bag of antagonism bag of hostility Bag of disgrace. It goes back to the sender in the name of Jesus. It's a wonderful testimony, Lizelle. I'm going to put the word up. And God will bless you for sharing it. If you are here and you have a testimony you want to share, share it. You have a testimony you want to share, share it. When I look at your testimony, I may ask you if you want to be invited online to share it as well. We're going to be doing a lot more of that. So that you can hear from the horse's mouth. So that you can hear from who it happened to. Dawn, you need to sort out your internet. I mean, I don't know what's happening, my dear, because you are one of those I would have liked to use Facebook to invite you to tell us your testimony because there's so much testimony. You need to sort it out, my dear. You need to seriously sort it out. You know, I'll be reaching out to one or two of you to ask whether you want to share your testimony online. And um, if you want to, fine. If not, if you want to remain incognito and just share your testimony via um, text in the way that we normally share it, fine. But this is the hour. Let's pray for Dr. Jesus Ministries. Let's pray that the owners of evil load will carry their load in Jesus' name. Owners of evil load against Dr. Jesus' ministry carry their, carry their load. Owners of evil load targeted against me, Pastor Sandra. Carry your load in the name of Jesus. There are lots of people that are angry with this ministry because what we do, they cannot do. Lots of people are angry. Please, Dig deep, deep. Dip your tongue in the blood of Jesus and fire that prayer. Owner of evil load. I like it, oh manager. It's a testimony platform. And that's what it is. It's not just the mantle of fire we carry. It's not just the mantle of proofs. It's the mantle of testimony. What God does for this ministry is very special. Pray that the strength of God is with me. That the fire of God surrounds me. That the enemies attempt to work hard. Against me, against Dr. Jesus ministry, that it falls flat on its face. The disgrace, the hatred, the rejection manufactured in the kitchen of Satan goes back to the center. I want you to pray that wherever hand has joined hands in to perpetuate wickedness, 
against Dr. Jesus Ministries or Pastor Sandra Oba. Like the untimely birth of a woman, you will never see the light of day. Pray for me, my people. Pray for this ministry. Tomorrow we carry on dealing with the spirits of poverty. Tomorrow we are washing our feet. Washing our feet, one, two. Uh, on Thursday, we are dealing with the altars of singleness and marital failure. On Friday, I will be live from the deliverance ground. As that the Kayo day will be taking special night vigil 11 p.m. to 4 a.m. If you can make it to that look on let it be a story that somebody else tells you about. If you can make it, make it. And God bless all of you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. As we say the grace, let's go. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen. For surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. I want you to shout seven hallelujahs to bless the name of God. Let's go. Hallelujah. 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 It is worth well, well with you. Thank you so much for your faith, your trust, your time. It is well with you. God bless you all. And uh, may the spirit of the living God continue to speak with us even as we go to sleep. Uh, may the tentacles of poverty never catch us or grip us or hold on to us again. In Jesus' name. Bye-bye.